Hi everyone, welcome back to the Taco Cave. For today's video, we'll be talking about how to make your own knobs at home. So the first thing I'm going to show you is some examples of knobs I've made in the last few weeks. This is actually a recycled Daiwa RCS knob. I've actually made it in a kind of a finesse style, that's why it's really thin and tape tapered. We can look at this, this is actually a Daiwa knob cap. Another knob I've made is actually made from an AliExpress knob. It looks like that. They're kind of glossy because I put um, true oil in it, so it gives a really gloss finish. For the purpose of today's video, we'll be using artificial corks. I'll just tell you why. They kind of look like this after you use them for a while. These corks have been used in salt water, you know, you've handled fish with them, you know, bait, whatever. You know, all the slime that gets in your hands when you touch the cork, you know, even if you put a cork seal or anything like that, it turns really grubby. It does, it's not really nice after a little while. So it's better if you use like, you know, kind of artificial cork, EVA, maybe birch bark or something else like that to actually make your knobs. Because this cork actually doesn't really last very long like that. The first thing we need to do when we make these type of knobs is actually to identify a little blank piece to put your cork, your EVA, your wood or even your birch bark which looks like this. The first thing that you're going to need to do is to find knob blanks such as this to put your material on. The first one I can tell you to find is all Shimano knobs like this. They're actually plastic with materials inserted on it. They actually can be found in cork or EVA. Some of these, you know, they might be found in the old Stradix or something like that. So you can just pull off the old material, make something new, put it back on and you get knobs like that. The next place you can find them is off like, you know, really not so nice knobs like that. But you can see like this has actually has a back, this is a front, a front and a back again. So this one is actually an AliExpress knob. I think it's from EK Fan or something like that. It costs like three, four dollars. What I did is I pulled the EVA out and I got this blank here. So we can use one of these to make one of our knobs today. Another one is this one. It's a bit different. So I'm just gonna take this out, I'll show you. Take out the cap. Just get that EVA piece out. But you actually got a little knob blank already. So for the purpose of today's video, we're actually gonna make two of these and I'm gonna show you how to do it. If you notice, they actually have different diameters for the knob caps, thus, this one will always have a larger diameter knob compared to one with a smaller knob cap such as this one. So the first thing we're going to start off is we're going to choose our material. For today's video, I'm going to be using ball and artificial types of cork. I've already pre-selected my material. So one is going to look like this. It's got like a little bit of vagoration and a red ball in the middle. Next one is just going to be this type of white and black variegated cork. This material will be fitted with this knob blank. First thing you need to do when you actually choose your material is to identify whether the length of the material is enough to cover the entire length of your knob blank. So this one actually kind of fits. It's a bit, sh not really a bit short, but it's just about right. This one on the other hand actually seems kind of long. So I have to actually trim it down later. Once we identify our materials, the first thing is we're going to need to measure these knob blanks and to actually expand the hole on these um, cork rings because obviously they're not going to fit. This is about 7mm and this is about 10 and this is probably about a 12 or something. 10 millimeters. yup, it's about there. This is about 12. So, yup, that's about 12. For the 10, I know that I have this reverse Foster's bit that we actually cut. This is actually a 3 8 Foster's bit, so that's about 10.5. So this will be quite good for that. And I don't have any other types of drill bits to actually go into that. I could use this type of drill bit like that. It's a number 12, 12 millimeter. I could use my hand and go like that, but it's not really accurate. So what I'm going to do with this one, so I'm going to use the same 3.8 bit again. I'm going to bore it. And after that, I'm going to use a reamer to expand the hole so it fits inside. I'm going to speed up this part of the video. So guys, stay tuned. So yeah, we've kind of got our base for the first knob already. You can see. So it actually just it really kind of fits like that. So we just have to glue it up, you know, and make this really nice. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward the next one as well.
Okay guys, and we're done. So we actually have the two blanks already made up. So I'm gonna get back to you guys in a little while. I'm just gonna vacuum all this. It's been a lot of cock dust over here. So. so now that we've cleaned that mess up, we can look back at our material blanks and we need to glue these up together. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna glue it, glue it together. One thing you should never use for any of your glues or your corks or anything like that is to use normal wood glue. This is for indoor use, it's not waterproof or anything like that. Don't ever use this. Use either two-part epoxy like this or use waterproof wood glue. I use Elmer's Max, I think it's pretty good. I use it for most of my corks. But for today, we're gonna to be using two-part epoxy. When you use two-part epoxy, you've gotta make sure everything is mixed pretty right. I'm gonna be weighing it actually, so I get a very accurate measurement. I wanna fast forward this part so you guys really don't have to watch. Okay, so now we've got our epoxy mix. We're gonna glue it together. We're gonna to be using some mandrels. Like this, you can use threaded rods or anything else like that. Just make sure it's glued straight. So I'm actually gonna be using a toothpick to apply the epoxy because I don't want too much of it to get on if I use the ice cream stick over here. So the first one, the larger hole, I'm gonna be using a mandrel, which is about 12 millimeters as well. I'm gonna slide it in, with that little collar up so I don't have to use so much of the mandrel rod. So these things act like clamps. You can use threaded rod or anything else like that. So I'm just gonna ever so slightly put the epoxy on. Make sure it's spread well. Don't overdo it. And I'm gonna speed this part up so you guys don't have to watch. Okay, and we're done. Just gonna put it on the side here and let it dry. Hi guys, we're back about a day later. Our glue has dried on the two pieces we've made yesterday. So today we're just going to put it on the mandrel, put it in the lathe, and cut these knobs down to shape. If you see, this one is actually a bit big, so I have to cut it down a bit, a fair bit, but it already fits inside that little knob case there. For this one, I've also made the holes yesterday. It fits pretty nicely. But you see, it's kind of uneven here, and it's not a really nice shape. So we have to cut this down to shape, and we're gonna finish it. Okay, guys. Now we're in the workshop. I put this um, the first piece in with the lathe. Got another piece here. We're gonna do one at a time. Yep. So a few things you need to do. I mean, you don't really have to use the lathe. You can use a drill and a threaded rod, as I told you before. The threaded rod kind of looks like this. You can have a rod with treads on it, so you can put nuts and bolts on it with washers. So you can use this as well. So we can use, we're gonna use chisels, wood chisels, to carve out our material and cut it down to shape. Another thing is we're gonna use sanding screens and sandpapers to get our final shape. It's gonna be a bit difficult for me to take this video because this camera is actually kind of in the way. I'm gonna fast forward so you guys don't have to watch the whole thing. Let's go. Okay guys, so now it's kind of flat and straight. We need to match the top cap for this one with this material. So I'm just gonna use the calipers to match it like that. And I'm gonna lock it. So we know this is the this is how big the diameter needs to be on one of the sides that's gonna be the front. Let's continue in fast motion. If you look at it guys, it actually looks pretty okay. Um, I'm going to do the other one. I'm probably not gonna use this because it's not very nice. I think, I think this one will be a lot better. I don't really like that knob anyway. I'll toss it later.
Hey guys, I think this one come out, it's gonna come out pretty good. So let's get it out. This one's good, and the one's real shit. So I'm not gonna use that one at all. So yeah, that's how you make your own knobs at home. Okay guys, we're back inside. Like you know, I'm not bluffing you. My hands are still dirty from just now. Um, this is the knob we made inside. Still needs to be glued. But I think it looks pretty nice. So let's just take that out. So this is the one we made from the AliExpress knob blank before. It's kind of like a medium finesse knob. So just take another look at that. We need to glue it inside, but we can have a look at that one. The other one, you know, it didn't turn out so well. I decided not to use it at all. Probably have to redo it. It's kind of hard because that little knob in the front is really big compared to this one. So I recommend you find, get the ones with the smaller knobs, especially like this one from AliExpress or this Daiwa RCS one. Because, you know, when you get smaller diameters in the front, you can play with much more shapes. It's a lot easier to fit. Once I glue this, you know, I'm going to finish it off with either some U40 cock seal. This is just your generic cock seal you find anywhere. This would actually give me a look kind of like this, but I want an amberish kind of look. This one dries kind of clear. I want like a glossy finish, such as like, you know, on this handle. It's kind of smooth and glossy, like these knobs. I didn't put as much. You can still feel a tactile feeling, but still grippy. So instead, I'm going to use true oil which is I think a boiled linseed oil of some sort with uh, uh, other types of fillers. It's boiled, you know, it polarized after that. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that right now. Just going to take this off. Don't really have to glue it right now. I can do it later when I'm done. But the thing about true oil over cork seal is that it takes a few more coats to get on. Like maybe if I want a good gloss finish, maybe seven to 10 coats. For this knob, I'm probably going to do about three to four. If I use cock seal, I'm going to need about a coat and that's done. But I wouldn't get, you know, that deep emberish effect like that for the bowl. It won't pop out. It just look like the same like that, you know. I can't really see the difference. This one, I can see the bowl pop out a lot compared to this. So, for true oil, just need to open the bottle like that. Make sure you always clean it so it's easy to get off later. Take a cloth like this. Ideally, it doesn't have a lot of lint a little bit of it don't overdo it just wipe it on if you can see it actually gives it a little amber type of hue looks like it's a bit wet you can compare this part here or this part here I'll just put a bit more so you guys can see a bit more clearly so you guys can see this side you know wipe off a bit and this side color actually changes when I put it on so if you want this type of look you got to use like you know linseed oil or true oil compared to rather than using just cock seal so make sure I fill it in good because this is the first coat also I have all these other things on the table today such as like you know my other rod handles even my knife scales for my Victorinox Tinker I'm gonna put some true oil on that get it nice and glossy but you guys really don't need to see this part so I'm just gonna work it out later so if you guys learned something today, you know, want to ask a question about this, please feel free to leave some comments below. If you like this video, learn something today, you know, anything else like that, want to see more content, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks guys.